Guys, Shard Miss Prime here doing another G.I. Joe Classified Series Assortment Figure Review on five figures in one video. I have a whole bunch of G.I. Joe Classified figures that I have not talked about on this channel that I've been wanting to get to. I figured, you know what, dude, just continue where you left off with the His Tank. So 101 was the Gunner, and we have Dreadnought Ripper over here at 102. We have General Clayton Hawk Abernathy, 103. Helix right there, Agent Helix is 104. Jason Shockwave Faria is 105, and we have the Dreadnought buzzer right over here if you're trying to get your gi joe classified figures you can do so oh, big 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 get your big badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com click the link in the description below and you can see here we don't have the windows but nice looking artwork or photography right there on the front for all of them and then on the side you get some actual artwork right there for all five of these and then on the back yeah get product shots or 3d renders showing off some of the deco some of the details decals and their accessories right there and then you get qr codes on the side for each one and you can see that and then it says gi joe spot varnished on the top not much more at the bottom so let's get to it and crack these things open <laughs> and here's all five figures out of the packaging and they look pretty awesome i really like all five of these uh, maybe some gripes here and there but really not a whole lot of complaints I'm not really familiar with the Dreadnoughts, but they do, or Dreadnoughts, but they remind me of the Reavers from Marvel Comics. But anyway, we'll take a look at each and every single one of these. Let's go ahead and start with Ripper. <laughs> oh, this dude looks so cool. The badass that I'll never be, but I wish I was. Look how cool this guy is, man. Really like how that expression is on his face. Looks like he's in the middle of talking some schmack or something. I don't know. He's got the teardrop right there. And then, yeah, you can see it fades on the side for that mohawk or faux hawk. I don't know. I, I like them when they're cut down a little bit. I don't know if this is the exact representation that most people remember him for. Then you can see he has dog tags for earrings, or at least that one side. And he's got some more dog tags over here. Then you can see the army camo painted right there on the tank top. We get some nice looking deco right here with the tattoos. So I think that looks great. Really pleased seeing all that. I, even though I don't know the significance of them all, I just think the figure looks dope. They have these added pieces right over here, and right over there. No interchangeable hands with these figures, which actually doesn't bother me because I have them holding stuff all the time anyway. And I don't remember where everything was exactly reused from, if it was reused from anything. I just don't keep track of the Joe's molds as closely as I do with Marvel Legends. But look at those boots. Oh, that looks great. Nice texturing. It has like a nice leathery texture to it, which I think looks cool. And you get peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And he comes with his weapons as well. So you get a sidearm right here that has a little blade attached to it. Nice gunmetal gray right over there. And you could fit that right into the holster right over there. Uh, we have this big old knife right here. And that fits in right over here. And then you have two guns. I think this is his signature weapon right over here. I thought it was this thing, but from doing some Google searches, it looks like it's this one right over there, which looks dope. Then he comes with the magazine, and you can just port that into the bottom. It does fall out very easily, so keep an eye on that. You know, it, I get frustrated sometimes. Oh no, it's on the wider side goes in. There you go, so it's supposed to be like that. Still falls out easily though. Well, okay. That you can go ahead and port this on the back right here. So that's one display option you have. There that goes. So that looks pretty cool how you can have him, you know, storing that over there and then have him holding this big old torture device right here. I don't know what this does besides torture people. I don't know. But yeah, it doesn't function or anything. There's no pull system here where it works on its own. That would be kind of nice. But uh, there's articulation on this handlebar right over here and you could hold it right there there's exhaust so i guess it's you know <laughs> this motor right here that makes it just clamp at joe's there you go <laughs> then we have hawk the original leader of the gi joe's special forces or special operations team and this looks really awesome i like this a lot however i'm not used to seeing him with the brown and gray hair i thought he's supposed to have blonde hair and a flat top right 
No, I, I, but I don't know enough of the G.I. Joe lore to understand exactly what happened there, but I have a feeling that, you know, in the cartoon they made Duke the leader and they wanted to make him look different from Duke, I guess. I don't know. But I think it came out looking really good, though. For a figure, it's just not the likeness I'm familiar with. I really love the bomber jacket over here, and it has all kinds of nice detail and deco on it. You get the golden wings right there. I love the copper shiny paint right there for the zippers. That looks nice. He's got all his accolades. Is that what that is? All the accolades? I thought this was for generals. I, I don't know. Fill me in. Let me know. I like the texturing right over here for the collar. And I love that we have this light brown over the darker brown plastic. It really makes this thing pop. It looks very realistic. There's times I'm looking at it, I feel like there's a black wash mixed in there too. But uh, it's more of a light brown over the darker brown. Nice deco right there with the yo-jo and get the American flag on this side right here. Gloves look pretty good. Now, again, I'm not going to call all the reused parts. Uh, you know, some of it does look familiar right over here. I think these were on rock and roll. I'm not sure, but the knee pads look different. Love the texturing. Camo pants look great. Love how the boots came out too. Nice details in there and everything. Really liking that a lot. And then there's your hawk butt and you get some sidearms. He comes with two sidearms. You get this one right over here. Looking pretty sweet. And you can just store that right here. And then we have this other one. That doesn't have that long barrel. I am not really a gun guy, but looks pretty good. And you could store this right there on the chest. And then he does come with this helmet. So you could go ahead and slap that on there. Looks pretty cool. And he comes with two different goggles. So you have a set of goggles specifically for the helmet. And then you also have this set of goggles that you could put on the figure itself. And that looks pretty neat. One thing I did so I wouldn't lose this was I wrapped this around the boot. And just pretend, uh, you know, just made pretend that it was like some kind of strap or something and put that around his leg, you know, on the back it looks silly. But you may not want to do that. You could possibly stretch that out and then it won't be as useful. He does come with two larger guns though, and I do like these. They look pretty cool. This looks like a grenade launcher. I don't really know. This looks like a rifle. Not 100% sure, but... Oh, I also had to mention that they got the gold right there. I, I love how that came out. You know, very, very fine detail. <laughs> and then we have Helix. And by the way, in between that last shot and this one, my Volume 2 G.I. Joe trade paperback showed up. So I'm happy to read those new Hama books, or old Hama books anyway. But I like this head sculpt a lot. She looks really good. Very, very nice details on here. And then we have a unique upper torso for Helix, but she has a reused lower torso. I like how all these straps look and everything. Not a lot of paint detail. There are some parts where, I don't know, I'm getting some weird blotching going on in the plastic. It's not staining from the outside. It looks like it's from the inside. I love this little deco uh, detail with the deco having that band-aid right there. That looks fantastic. You don't have that on this side right here, but yeah, nice little details throughout on this figure. It looks really good. I guess this counts as an accessory. I already had that on there, but you can see there's the back. and She has this belt right here that has some nice shiny gunmetal gray. I really like that quite a bit. does move around a lot on me. And then she has the same uh, hips and legs and everything. And she has the same legs and waist and everything as Scarlet over here, which I cannot wait to get the vintage looking version. That looks like the ideal Scarlet. So yeah, I went and did a butt comparison with one of the Valkyries. They made these Valkyries hella bootylicious, man. I, I don't know what else. Buttage. They increased the buttage for these Valkyries compared to this older mold right over here, which I do appreciate. Uh, the boots are the same as Scarlet and everything. You can see we have a darker gray over a lighter gray. And then peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And she comes with a ton of weapons. Uh, you get this big old knife right here. And it works better storing it under like that. So that's how I store that there. Uh, she does come with two side arms. And they are identical to each other. So you can see those. Looking pretty good. And you can holster them on the sides she comes with her two katanas and they look really nice it looks like there's a little serration sculpted on the side of these blades look i think which adds a lot of depth to them and store these on that uh sheath backpack that i had on there i don't know what else to call it but it's her sword storage 
So you can go ahead and put those right there. But my favorite weapons that she comes with are these weird, unique uh, pincer things or whatever. These are these blades that are attached to her wrists, and they have two hinges on them. And I think they just look very, very cool. And they are identical to each other. You can just port those on the wrist right there and have those ready to go for action. I think that's great. So I didn't really pose her much with the other weapons. I like her using these right over here. <laughs> we have shockwave and i don't know if this head was reused from beachhead or not i should have grabbed the beachhead but hey i don't mind the ski mask at all the blue eyes the whole blue theme right here it looks cool to me man i like it uh, this hat i did have to heat it up to get this ported on here to feel like it wouldn't fall off immediately it does seem like it's a lot hat with you know the ski mask but whatever I i'm happy to have that on there the vest looks really good i like the paint applications right over here looking very clean the camo pattern looks pretty good throughout as well and we have these added pieces right over here. You can see we have pinless joints right over there. You have these forearm guards. You have this belt right here looking pretty sweet. Not a whole ton of details to look at right there, but you get forearm guards on each side. You get the holsters. And then looking right here, I guess this was reused from somebody else. And then on one side, we have this added uh, knife sheath right over here, which is kind of tricky to get into position just feels like this wasn't made for this figure so it's always kind of flopping on one side or another i tried to hike it up a bit and then it started splitting right over here so not a lot of detail right here at the bottom of the feet but to go ahead and load him up with his weapons and show off everything that he comes with he has this knife right here and you can go ahead and store that right there along the boot it looks pretty good it does come with two side arms and they are identical to each other and they have removable magazines so you can just port that in there Ooh, i almost just broke that damn oh god okay it's still okay though damn you can port that in there port this one right in here and then you have a baton which if he's not holding the baton and i have him holding a gun then i'll go ahead and port the baton right here i feel like it'd be nice if there was a way to fit both in here but i guess there's just not enough room so it's either one or the other but i like that he comes with a baton though so that looks cool uh, he also comes with this longer blade which i had put this one in the wrong spot. This one's supposed to go right over here. There we go. And then you get this longer one, which is for the boot. And it has this weird thing at the end. I guess it's more of a tool than just a regular knife. I, I don't really know. Inform me in the comment section below. And then you also get the riot shield, which looks great with the Cobra deco right there. So he's taken out four. And then you get the see-through section right here, which could have been nice if they had see-through plastic right there. I, I guess that's what that's for anyway. Some nice paint detail on it. I wish they had a way of rotating this. You could only really put this on his right side. So I wish they had a way where you could rotate it around so you could have him holding it on his left side as well. <laughs> then we have Dreadnought Buzzer, which is one of the ones I really like, but also probably the most frustrated with. I really like the face sculpt over here. I love the five o'clock shadow. It looks really good. He does come with his signature sunglasses, or I've only seen him, you know, through my Google searching that he has these glasses on here. I wish they found a better way to get these tabbed in or just left them on there all the time. I don't know if there's a particular storyline or episode or whatever where he's not having the sunglasses, but I feel like he always has these on and they just don't stay on that well uh, the best results i had was from heating this up and then cooling it down while pinching the sunglasses a little bit more towards the middle like that but then they still have widened out on me i mean they look good i like the gunmetal gray right there you know black in the middle but anyway getting on to the rest of the figure not a whole lot of interesting stuff to look at i mean the hair on the chest the hair on the arms does look very good looks a lot better than some of the wolverine figures that we've seen recently i guess right here it looks eh, no nah, I, I gotta say let's say it looked a little bit too patchy but when you look at it closely you can see the flesh tone underneath there so yeah i think that looks great with the pinless joints you have dog tags right there i guess he was a sheriff and got some grenades and the belt looks great skull and crossbones studded belt over there and then nothing really going on on the back you get the ripped sleeveless shirt and then you can see we get these straps added to the legs. This must have been used from an older figure because we have the pins sticking out. Oh my god, why aren't people going insane over that, you know? Because when it happens to Marvel Legends, when they have pins here and pinless there, 
everybody goes crazy, right? And same thing with Helix, you know, pins here, pinless there. Nobody's going crazy, but if it's a Marvel Legend, you can't do that, I guess. I, I don't know what the deal with that is. It didn't bug me with the Legends, doesn't bug me with these, uh, but I do appreciate it when we see more pinless. I do like that. Anyway, there's the peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And then as far as the weapons go, I do like storing this chainsaw on his back. It, it's a thing I love about Classified is when you can have the figures have everything on their person. You know what I mean? You don't have extra stuff laying around. So if you want him holding the other weapons, you can do that. But this is supposed to be his signature weapon right here, the big old chainsaw, and it does look very cool. I like how it's, you know, flat gray right here. You get silver right there in the middle. Good looking chainsaw. And then you get these two other weapons right here. Nice silver paint on this. And I love this. Holy crap. What is that, dude? You got... Two buzz saws smashed into the middle of a baseball bat right here, and this is all harnessed together. What a cool looking weapon. I really like this one a lot. He also comes with a sidearm that has an extra wrap on the handle right there, so you could go ahead and store that on his side. And then he does come with a blade, which you could go ahead and store on this side right over here. While it's hard to really notice, there is this fine paint detail little touches of gray mixed in with the blonde hair right there that just makes it look a little bit more realistic i really appreciate that now i am not going to go through an articulation segment with these figures they are fairly consistent throughout the line you can see some changes right over here with hawk though he does have the ball joint at the torso and the ball jointed waist where most of them have the standard ab crunch that you're most likely to see on marvel legends and then of course uh, it is a little bit different right over there with helix so hawk and helix have more similar torso, torso articulation. They all have the double jointed elbows and they have ankle pivots in there. No toe articulation, but you can see uh, that buzzer or uh, yeah, buzzer right here is standing at about six and a half, maybe just barely under six and a half inches tall. Uh, shockwave around the same height. And then he looks over here is just barely uh, right at six inches. Hawk similar, just under six and a half. And then you can see the top of that mohawk right there. Ripper's just a above the six and a half inch mark. Now I don't have too many size comparisons for you guys, but I did want to show off all the dreadnoughts together. So you can see we have Buzzer and Ripper right here next to Zartan and Zorana. And then here's Hawk next to the rest of the original 13 G.I. Joe characters that we have in Classified so far. We have Snake Eyes, we have Breaker, uh, we got Sergeant Stalker, we got Scarlet over there, Rock and Roll and Grunt. And then we're missing uh, Zap, Flash, Clutch, uh, kill switch and Steeler. That's it, Steeler. <laughs> and then here's Helix next to a couple of their female Joes. We have Scarlet, which is the second version, and I can't wait to get rid of this version because I need that retro card version. And then we have Cover Girl, and she has different unique pants, and they are not the same pants as the Valkyries. I think this classified line has done so much more for female figures than what Marvel Legends has done in the past six years, right? Like, oh man, they're doing such a good job. I really love this toy line. And then here's the five G.I. Joe classified figures next to your average six inch scale figure we have the marvel legends big time letdown spider-man huh, so you're a dreadnought huh i have no idea what the dreadnoughts are but i know what dreadlocks are and that ain't one of them uh, dude that's a ponytail not dreadlocks what the hell kind of phonies oh! So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been a bit under the weather today, so but I do love these figures, man. I've just been so happy with the Jajo Classified line that for 2023, I gotta say they've been the line of the year for me. That's just my opinion. I've been loving them. I wanted to do another roundup of these in a review. Uh, in the future, I'll do three figures at a time, but I wanted to catch up and here we go. So, I really do like the figures a lot. I am going to grade them all at once. I don't have any serious major complaints, just some things that irk me and that just kind of make the figures tricky to pose around, like the glasses on buzzer that that annoyed me the most over anything else getting that hat to stay on shockwave that's a little bit irritating so there are some little irritants here and there but for the most part i'm just so stoked about these i'm very much sold on this line and i'm just very happy with the way these came out the paint the sculpting the articulation they're just a whole lot of fun man and at the price point of around 25 bucks a figure i'm gonna give these gi joe classified series figures a sun rating of <laughs> Yes, 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 yes,
And that's my general rating between all five of them. I want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments section below. If you want to see the latest in action figure news, you can find it all over at ToyNewsEye.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, and on whatnot. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. That's crispy. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.